Hey friend, in today's watercolor tutorial, I'm gonna be teaching how to paint this geometric style of a landscape of Death Valley National Park in California. Without further ado, let's get painting. For today's watercolor tutorial, I'm gonna be using Burnt Umber, Van Dyke Brown, Purple, Venetian Red, and Payne's Gray by Windsor Newton. I'm also going to be using a size six and a size 12 round Princeton brush. I am going to lay down a wash of water using my size 12 brush, and I'm just gonna do the first couple of inches of my paper. And my paper is a size five by seven inches that I've taped down here. And once I have my wash, I'm gonna take just a very um, muted tone of Payne's Gray for my sky. So I'm just taking a very light amount. It is a very bold color, so just start kind of smaller as far as the amount of paint that you use to start. And then from here, I'm just gonna allow this area of the paint's gray to set and dry, and we'll slowly work our way from the top to the bottom of the painting. To start out, I want to use my size six brush, and I am going to do just the silhouette of a gray mountain, kind of a cooler blue gray using some Payne's Gray. And I am just going to lightly sketch just some kind of hilltop, mountaintop, triangular brush strokes here just to get a really loose silhouette of a mountain. From here, I'm just gonna take a little bit more Payne's Gray and I am going to kind of do an outline, just a little sketch of some of some more hills here that are going to be more like sand dunes down below. And once I have these two sketch lines, I am going to fill this top with some Payne's Gray. And I'm definitely doing um, more of a darker saturation of Payne's Gray in comparison to the lighter wash of the sky above so it'll perfectly conceal that water line um, from the sky just like so right here and I'm just gonna fill this area out and once it's filled I will let it set and dry and we will move on to our next layer Next up, I want to take my size 6 brush and mix a little bit of Payne's Gray with some Burnt Umber. So I'm going to just kind of gradually transition and lighten up some of our sand dunes here, make them a little bit more earthy. So I'm just getting plenty of this Burnt Umber mixed in. And I'm going to start by kind of sketching just a simple kind of hill Again, using some really just loose, wavy strokes. I'm not overthinking it too much. And then from here, I'm just going to mix this color up and then just apply it all the way across in a wash, just like we did with the Payne's Gray one. And I'm just gonna fill in this space we will definitely add some more details as far as some shading goes, but our mountain, or not so much a mountain, this is going to be more of like a sand dune kind of look, but once this is dry, we will add those shaded details. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this set and dry, and when we come back, we will add another layer in addition to some shading. Next up, using my size 6 brush, I am going to use a blend of Burnt Umber mixed with a little touch of 
Venetian red and some purple. So this color is kind of like an earthy, almost plum kind of color. Um, I really love the richness of this color and how it just is gonna add a nice pop of color that isn't just brown or like a dark gray. Um, so it's one of my personal favorites in this painting. And I am going to start out by painting just about an inch far from the edge of the right side of the paper. I'll just mark a little dash line here because that's where we're going to begin this little sketch here. And then I'm going to do just a swooping kind of curved C shape. And then I will do the same C shape but in reverse. And then I'm going to do kind of more of an elongated C shape here. And then I will bring this curve slightly more towards the left and just kind of tuck it down below. So it almost looks like a snake, if you will. So next though, I want to paint just a third partial layer here. So I am simply just going to do another kind of hilltop, slightly curved line, just like so. It's got one little hilltop here. And then using the same color, I am just going to simply fill this in. Okay, and I'll just let that set for a moment, but before I move on to any other part, I want to add the shading in these areas here. And so I'm going to start with a little bit of Payne's Gray, and I just want to add just some minimal simple shading to this first initial mountain that we did. Our sun source is coming from the right, so it's going to be more highlighted towards the right edges of all of our sand dunes slash mountain areas. And so I'm just taking some plain Payne's Gray and I'm just adding a touch of shading on this left side of this peak. I'm kind of doing a little bit of a curve inward where I shade on this larger mountain top. I'll do a couple more areas of shading. And again, it's super simple. I'm just kind of applying my brush lightly and just adding a second layer of the paint's gray and keeping the shading areas a little bit loose and jagged so that way the shading doesn't look like a perfectly um, kind of cookie cutter shape. We want some variegation to it. All right, and then from here, I want to mix just a touch of Payne's Gray to the mix I did of the Burnt Umber with a little bit of Payne's Gray. I'm going to add more Payne's Gray to that just to deepen it slightly. And I want to just do the same technique on this kind of more sand dune area of adding the shading, except the difference is that it'll be more of an S-curve shape instead of like more of a jagged 
shaded shape and I'm just gonna add a couple simple little S curves here. And I'll just kind of sketch them out ahead of time just so you can see. Okay, so this is just a very loose kind of sketch. And then from here, alongside the left side of these S curves, I'm going to add some more of that shaded color. And here I'm just going to play a little bit with the layout of the shading, maybe add just a little bit more curvature and variegation, elongating some of the shaded, shaded curves here. And before I move on, I'm just going to take a clean, wet brush and just lightly buff out the harsh lines of our shaded areas. I kind of want to just smooth these out just a little bit on the left side. So I'm just taking a wet brush just to help kind of blend and buff out those edges. And then just to finish it out, I'm just going to add a touch more of our shaded color just in a couple areas, just to add a little bit more depth. And there we have it. Next up, I am going to use my size 12 brush to do a light wash of Burnt Umber. And to help speed up the process, I'm simply just going to take some more water all the way across. And then just apply a good wash of the burnt umber color it's a nice rich warm brown that i use for a lot of my landscapes all right once i have applied this i'm now going to grab my size six brush and I'm going to use a little bit of Van Dyke Brown, and that's just a little bit of a deeper, darker brown. And I'm going to add some texture and shadows to this sand dune. And again, this sand dune towards this left side is going to have more of the highlights showing, um, being that the sun is on the right side. But just towards the right side of this page, I am just applying some streaks of the Van Dyke Brown. 
just using the 45 degree angle of my brush And here I'm just having a few streaks pop out, but they all kind of eventually swoop down towards the right side of the page. And next I'm going to take just a little bit of Payne's Gray, just a touch, and I'm gonna add the Payne's Gray closest to the edge of the paper, just to add even more depth and shading to this area. Okay, and I'm just gonna let this area set. We may come back to it to add some more texture, but for now, I really like where it's going. Now towards the left, I wanna add just a little bit of shading to the blend we did of the purple and the burnt temper and the Venetian red. Just using that same color, I'm simply just gonna layer um, some shadows. And again, I'm doing kind of a C curve or an S curve on this hill right here and then I just kind of drag out that shaded area slightly following the curvature of this sand dune and I just give some kind of rounded curves to the shaded area towards the left and I'll do the same thing off towards this right hill again just another kind of S curve bringing it down and then dragging it out towards the left. And then I'm just gonna take a wet, clean brush and just buff out that transition just a little bit on the left edges of our shadow. Okay, next I'm going to take my size 12 brush and I am going to use that really nice kind of earthy plum pink color that we did for this third layer of the mountains and I'm just going to take my size 12 brush and do a nice wash of this color and I'm going to apply it all in this wet not this wet, this white area that's remaining. And next, I'm going to take a little bit of purple and I'm gonna mix it with some Venetian red. And I'm just gonna do a layer of this color just about an inch down from the top area of where we painted the wash. And I'm just going to start layering 
some of our shaded colors here. I'll apply a little bit more color towards the left corner, kind of swooping upward slightly. And I am just going to let this area kind of sit and dry. And then when we come back, I'm going to do a little bit more shaded details to add some more texture. Side note, I wanted to add as if your sides here, like your color of this kind of plum purple start to bleed into here. If that's not fully dry, you can just take a dry clean brush and just buff out that area and it'll kind of erase any bleeds that you do not want. I'm also being mindful that I can use the tip of my brush to kind of buff out the harsh plum sketch line, the little kind of snake S curve that we applied earlier. And just by applying a little bit of pressure, you can kind of buff that out gradually as we go. Now that those areas are dry, I'm going to mix up some more Payne's Gray with some burnt umber and i want to kind of do a really dark cast shadow in this lower area of the sand dune and this area is going to be just like a nice pop of contrast and again i'm going to kind of follow this s curve form and so i'm starting at this kind of middle c area here and I'm going to just do kind of a backward C to start, just like so. And then from here, I'm going to do a really exaggerated elongated curve all the way to the left. And then I'm going to round it back towards the right. So we've got this kind of curve here. And I'm going to kind of round it towards the right a bit and then bring it back down. And then from here, I'm going to outline another kind of S-curve, starting just below the main point that we started with. Just like so. And then from here, I'm just going to do some really loose curves. It's almost got like this cartoon bird shape right here. And then I'm just going to swoop this back towards the left. Alrighty, and then I'm just going to fill this area with the color that we just mixed. Okay, using that same color, I'm going to start to add some more shadows to this left side. And first, I want to add a little shadow on this left kind of hill area here. And once I outline it, I'm just going to go ahead and fill that in using just a little bit more water on my brush just to kind of carry some of that pigment from the sketch line and allowing it to bleed to just cast a shadow here. From here, I'm going to do another shadow. And if needed, you can mix more of that paints gray and burnt umber color. And I'm just going to fill this area in. Mm -hmm. 
All right, and then I'm gonna do one more nice deep shadow coming off of this C curve right in the middle. All right, and while these areas are still slightly wet, I'm now gonna add some more color in between. So for our first color up towards the top, this highlight area, I'm going to just do some plain Van Dyke Brown and just add a little bit of that with some water just to tone it down a little bit. I'm just gonna fill this area in. Once that area is filled in and once it's still slightly wet, I'm just gonna take a slightly damp brush and just lift some of the pigment up a bit just to give a little bit of a highlight. I'm just using some pressure with a clean damp brush just to lift that just a little bit. Next, for this area here, we're gonna do some more of that really pretty kind of plum color that's the purple mixed with some of the Venetian red and some of the burnt umber. Okay, so once we have that color mixed, we can go ahead and fill this area in. I love this color palette. If I was doing a house or something, <laughs> very casually, but if I had a house, I would be like, look at this painting and capture the essence of this painting with all these colors and let's just go for it. I love the kind of earthier, deep jewel tones, so pretty. I'm just gonna clean my brush and just take a slightly damp brush and again just lift just a couple areas just to give some texture and variegation in the shadowy area. This next area here, I'm just gonna fill in with a blend of Venetian Red and Van Dyke Brown. And I will just carry over that same technique of filling in this area and then just gently lifting a couple areas of highlights. In between the transition of the Payne's Gray Burnt Umber shadow and then the three different colors we laid out, I just want to take some water on a clean brush and just soften these transitions and kind of buff them out a little bit. So I'm just going to take some water on a clean brush and all I'm doing is just taking a little bit of water and just applying a light amount of pressure and not too much water but just a little will make a difference and I'm just going to lightly buff out some of these transitions slightly using the belly of my brush just to kind of swoop the water across and that way some of those lines aren't so blocky or cookie cutter.
Last but not least, I'm just gonna take some plain Van Dyke Brown and I'm just gonna layer some more brush strokes just like we did when it was more wet and wet, but this time just allowing some of the brush strokes just to pop using just a combination of wet and to dry and wet and wet. And I'm just gonna layer some more just angled, kind of swooping up towards the left top corner of the page. Once, once I lay those out, I'm just gonna take a damp brush and just kind of help soften some of those brush strokes a hair bit. I'm using the side of my brush at a 45 degree angle just to get these kind of loose, broader brush strokes. Lastly, I'll take just a little bit of um, Payne's Gray and just add a few touches of that closer to the edge of the painting. I definitely lost a battle with my painter's tape on this side. Oh well. But I hope that you enjoyed this watercolor tutorial of Death Valley National Park. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any further watercolor tutorials.